Hello everybody, today we are going to discuss The Silver Box by John Goldsworthy who was born in 1867 and died in 1933. He uh, is quite famous for his work The Foresight Saga which is the first of the trilogies of novels and his first stories were published under the pseudonym John St. John. He wrote as uh, John St. John, that was the pseudonym he adopted for his first of the stories. And then, as I said, the Foresight Saga was his most popular of uh, the trilogies, uh, the three novels that he wrote. And he wrote several other novels and short stories and plays and he was awarded Nobel Prize for Literature in 1932. And uh, he wrote plays as well, Justice is his most popular uh, play and then here we are going to discuss the silver books. He was a kind of humanitarian who spoke for social reforms and presented the grievances of the people. Uh, he wrote about the middle class people and such and here in this play as well he is uh, speaking for such uh, kind of people, he uh, his play Justice actually brought uh, social reforms in uh, or say brought about reforms in the justice system of England which was prevalent in those times and here too in this play he is talking about how there are double standards uh, for uh, different uh, strata of society like different standard of justice for the upper class and different standard of justice for the lower class. We have different yardsticks, we have different standards for different sorts of people. We treat them differently and that is and he said that law should be equal for all whether rich or poor uh, it should be operative at the same level for all uh, levels of people, all kinds of people. That's what he meant uh, by his play but it is never so as we see here in this play as well and that's what he is trying to bring out so uh, before beginning the story uh, let me introduce the characters of this play and the characters are Mr. Barthwick John Barthwick let me rub this out So Mr. John Barthwick he is an MP and member of Liberal Party so as there are Labour Parties, uh, Conservatives and Liberals so he is of Liberal Party and then we have his wife he is a man of principles uh, though it's only at the outward level, we see that when it comes to him, he follow, he uh, just uh, forsakes all his principles and uh, all uh, we can say, all his rules of honesty and uh, in, uh, integration and all that, and he uh, just uh, subterfuges or uses different means and. Uh, low means to uh, save his reputation and his son as well. So that's what we see here. Then we have Mrs. Barthwick. So Mrs. Barthwick, of course, is wife, and we don't have her full name here in this play, and she is. Uh, a doting mother of course loves her son very much and uh, she is against a uh, labor uh, party and lower class people and she defends uh, liberals and her own class against those labor class people and low class people then we have the son of course Jack Barthwick So Jake Barthwick 
His occupation uh, is not given, what he does is not given, he simply does nothing, that's what we can say here and just indulges in some uh, immoral and useless practices, that's what we come to know through this play. He commits a crime as well, uh, but he uh, gets caught free for that because he belongs to a rich and high class, his uh, father is an MP, so they use their power and clout and he gets caught free. And we have other characters here, apart from these three family members, we have the servants at the house. So here we have Marlowe. So Marlowe is the manservant. Then we have Wheeler. Wheeler is the maid there. Then we have Mrs. Jones. So, Mrs. Jones is the charwoman, that is, woman who uh, cleans up the house and other things. Uh, so, she is a charwoman there, a cleaning lady. In short, we have her husband. Her full name is given, that's used just once or twice in the play. So her name is Jane, uh, Jane Jones. Then we have her husband, Mr. Jones. So throughout the play, mostly uh, she comes to us as Mrs. Jones and her husband is Mr. Jones. That's what uh, maximum or mostly used in the play. Mr. Jones, his name is also given, that is Jane, Jane Jones and he does nothing, he is out of his job, uh, he is a drunkard and he ill treats his wife, Mrs. Jones who works in uh, at Mr. Barthwick's house so and as a cleaning lady there. Then we have uh, Mr. Snow. So Mr. Snow is the detective who investigates the uh, case of the silver box so now I must tell you that why this play has been titled silver box or what's the significance actually so the whole play goes around revolves around this uh, silver box the silver box which is actually a cigarette case and that case was stolen from Mr. Barthwick's house and they suspect Mrs. Jones and it is found at Mrs. Jones house so and how it uh, it all evolves and comes to an end comes to a conclusion is the whole story but yes um, they have to suffer for this and we'll get to know or we'll discuss more of uh, it in the story man story here then we have a roper and Roper is the solicitor, so solic who actually um, takes the case of Jack Barthwick and defends him in the court. So then we have Mrs. Sidden. So Mrs. Sidden is the landlady of Mrs. Johns. So these are the main characters in this play and apart from these main characters we have some minor characters as well the justice, the usher, the clerk and uh, the Levins family. So Mr. Levins, uh, his daughters, uh, Teresa Levins and Maud Levins. So a bit of their case has also been discussed uh, in this play. Now. Uh, let me come to the story, that how the story begins. So the scene is uh, Mr. Barthwick's dining room and uh, Marlowe enters the room with a dustpan in his hand and Mrs. Jones with a scuttle. So scuttle is a pail like thing in which coals are carried or coals are kept. So they enter and it is 8.30 in the morning she is sweeping and cleaning uh, as is her job and 
Mr. John, uh, sorry, Jake Barthwick is lying there on the sofa. So hearing the sound and the noise, he wakes up and he asks uh, Miss Jones, he asks who is there and she said, I'm Mrs. Jones and what's the time? So she says it's about 9. So he was all shocked and he gets up and said that uh, now don't tell anybody about this that I, you, you found me here lying on the sofa. So she agrees to that that she won't tell anybody about that and he is having a severe headache and then uh, Mr. Marlowe and uh, Mrs. Jones talk, uh, talk about her husband. So her husband is actually a drunkard and he ill-treats her and beats her and all that. So Marlowe talks about uh, Mr. Jones uh, with uh, Mrs. Jones and she uh, agrees to all that and she says that though he had a good job as a groom actually he took care of the horses but he lost his job and after that he's always drunk and he uh, beats her badly and uh, doesn't treat her well so you you can take help of uh, the police or court but she actually is not willing for that so in this way they are talking of the married life of mrs jones which is actually not going well so it was a love marriage and uh, it was after that uh, that uh, he lost his job because uh, his behavior was found to be immoral because Mrs. Jones got pregnant before her marriage and as a result of that he lost his job. And since then he was trying to seek a job but he was never able to get a job and so it made him quite upset and he then drunk and drank and then he, uh, whenever he would return home he would ill-treat and beat her. So this was the kind of life she was having after that and she was working very hard to keep his uh, to keep his family together, uh, to earn for his family, her family. She was doing all that she could do. So now uh, this was the first scene of the play and the second scene. In the second scene, Mrs. and Mr. Barthwick are talking to each other. They are actually uh, uh, um, reading a newspaper and then uh, sharing their views about that. So in the newspaper, the news is about a labor man winning an el by election. So she gets quite upset about that. So Mr. Jack, uh, Mr. John is quite uh, calm and cool and he says that I knew and it's quite natural, I predicted it. So Mrs. Barthwick didn't like this and she said that how can you be so uh, cool and calm about these, these, you know. So Mr. Barthwick said, you know, that uh, we need the representation of all the parties to bring about reforms. And he is a man of principle as I already stated and quite honest and uh, man of integrity and all. But Mrs. Barthwick didn't uh, like his talk about honesty and principles and reforms and all. And she says that these people, you know, these people have no uh, nationality or no patriotism. They simply uh, want to be like us. They are simply uh, imitating us. They want power like us. They want money like us. Nothing else. They don't have any patriotism or such kind of feelings. They are trying to copy and imitate us. Nothing else. So this is what she feels about these people. And she says that education has brought the worst of these people actually they it has unsettled and upset them and we can see uh, the the manners of servants these days that it's not like as it used to be earlier so it's all because of education so that is the main reason that's what she feels uh, what has actually um, <coughs> brought uh, about the worst of these servants or these labor class people so and this way they are talking and meanwhile what happens they got a letter and it was actually addressed to mr barthwick senior of course john barthwick he opens the letter and it was from a tailoring firm some moss and something and uh, he finds that 
actually it was for uh, Jack Barthwick he had uh, given a check of around 40 pounds and what happened that the check uh, got bounced and this was the reason that he got a letter and it was an offence and of course this uh, upset Mr. Barthwick and he, he told Mrs. Barthwick about that see this is your son that what uh, he does and as it was an offence oh, he, he didn't like this kind of behaviour of his son meanwhile what happens the son comes to the dining table for breakfast and Mrs. Uh, Barthwick who is a doting mother asked him to sit there and asked that what happened he said that he is having a severe headache and uh, Mr. Barthwick actually uh, taunts him and says that you know what you have done this is quite uh, a dishonest practice and you are quite a nuisance to the society and he says that uh, what could I have done I had no money Mrs. Barthwick uh, defends her son saying that he simply might have intended of overdrawing he didn't know what would happen of this uh, she says about her son like this and tries to defend him and the son says that what could I do if I uh, didn't have any money so I was helpless so Mr. Barthwick said that I was uh, more hard up than you I didn't have um, and he actually the son said that you you could have lots of money and that's why you couldn't have done this but I don't have any money so Mr. Barthwick said that I was more hard up than you were I didn't have any money at all so he said that okay how much you were given by your father or how much you uh, would have in your time so he said that's not the matter important is the gravity of this crime or this act that you have done so Mrs. Barthwick uh, defends him um, talking about his headache and all that and then they leave the room and at this time what happens Marlowe comes in and he says actually what in the first scene itself Marlowe had noticed the uh, uh, that the silver box was missing from uh, th uh, that Jack's room actually last evening he himself had uh, put the silver box there and he saw he noticed it there and the next morning it was missing so he noticed that he asked Wheeler who is the maid servant there he asked Wheeler about the silver box but she also did notice that they suspected Mrs. Jones because she had been alone in the room uh, for some time so it could be Mrs. Jones she was there so uh, finally they thought of though they couldn't believe that Mrs. Jones could do that but uh, after all the matter should be reported to Mr. Barthwick and they decided to do that. So he uh, finally he went to Mr. Barthwick and told this to uh, Mrs. Uh, to, to sorry Mr. Barthwick about all this and Mr. Barthwick then inquired about that what who, who he suspect and who could have done this so he suspected Mrs. Jones that she was alone there in the room for uh, quite a while and uh, she uh, was having a hard life she was hard up as well so she reports all the things to Mrs. Barthwick uh, sorry Mr. Barthwick meanwhile what happens a uh, lady comes there an unknown lady and this unknown lady hasn't been given any name she is simply an unknown lady and a disreputable woman actually with whom uh, Mr. Jack Barthwick had a kind of affair or so. So she was there and uh, she was asking for Jack Barthwick but Jack was not there because he had gone with his mother. Now he is looking for Jack Barthwick but then Mr. John Barthwick said okay you uh, ask her in and you get her in and he said uh, I was looking for Jake Barthik he said he is having headache and you just call her in no matter no problem so she was called in and she also she said that I want to talk to John Barthik he said I am John Barthik and he said you must be uh, intending to meet my son Jake Barthik she said yes but okay he is having a headache you can tell me what you want and I can perhaps attend to that then she said actually your son uh, quarreled with me yesterday we met yesterday and then he
took my reticule and it contained my purse and that purse had all the money I had so I want my purse uh, back so <coughs> he asks uh, more about that but she says that I don't want to create any fuss here I just want my uh, purse back so Mr. finally Jack was called and Jack um, uh, he asked Jack that do you know this lady he uh, agreed to that that yes he remembered he met that lady and she is asking of a purse but he doesn't remember of that purse he said I didn't take any purse or any reticule from her she said yes you took my reticule and it had uh, it had a purse as well and it had all the money but he doesn't remember anything about that he was quite drunk and he even quarreled with her and then he took that ridicule away so she uh, tried to uh, remind him of all that but he doesn't remember finally he agrees to search for that and the butler goes and search but he doesn't find anything and there was the reticule but in that reticule there was nothing no purse was there so she said yes it had the purse and I had all uh, the money in there and I want that badly and that's why uh, I came here otherwise I wouldn't have come in here uh, I, I have to pay my rent today and if I don't pay my rent today then uh, she will just ask me you know, get me out of uh, my my place so I want it badly so if you if I don't get my money then I'll report this matter she finally threatens so said I don't have a penny even how could I give you the money so finally Mr. Barthwick that is uh, the father Mr. John Barthwick comes in between him he said okay if I give you the money that settles the case and how much was there in the purse so she said that that it was seven pounds and twelve shillings seven yes seven pounds and 12 shillings so he said okay he uh, paid her 8 pounds and he said the rest will pay for your purse and your fare so okay he uh, she took the money and she left she departed uh, the case was all over but then uh, still uh, it was uh, uh, there was still to come there were more surprises to come so okay uh, he went away and the father actually blamed him that you are really a nuisance to the society your type of people and all that he scolds him badly and then he said you didn't uh, help me bec uh, uh, just because I am your son but you didn't want uh, it to uh, get into the papers that's why you helped me so he is quite insolent and rude with his father and then he goes away then Mr. Barthwick actually asked Marlowe to uh, call Mrs. Jones Mrs. Jones comes there and he inquires about inquires uh, Mrs. Jones about her background her family and all that and she says that she has three children the eldest one is of uh, uh, was nine years old her husband was uh, always drunk and he beat her badly and all the things she reported and she also mentioned about that he uh, had a good job as a groom earlier but then after um, what he lost his job because he was uh, he was given a say because she got pregnant before their marriage and after that he was unable to find a job though he's trying very hard to find a job but no and then she said that uh, she is li uh, she is living um, uh, at six shillings a week uh, means they had rented a room and she is living there and the children went to school and it was hard to manage for all that the school and uh, the food but she was managing somehow she was working very hard for that and sometimes they would go without any meal so that was the condition and finally he told her that you know the silver box is missing from here and then okay she left okay and she left at home at home what happened that uh, she uh, was 
going to prepare for stew and she and her husband talk of their married life and how uh, that uh, afterwards that it had all ruined for them that they were having a very bad kind of life he also is sorry and she is also quite sorry for her husband though he ill treats him, uh, her but still she loves him and she says that you love your children as well so uh, he also agrees to that and then actually uh, what that he she says that you know uh, for and uh, i have only four and a half pence and uh, we have to pay the rent today uh, and actually it was in the arrears they were um, behind their rent and the landlady would be there for the rent so he said that okay you can pay the rent and he uh, meanwhile this happened that mrs sidden who was the landlady she came there uh, he handed her a sovereign she uh, gave that sovereign to the landlady and it was around 14 shillings so six would be back to her so okay uh, she uh, just uh, paid back the sh six shillings and she went away and then uh, he was talking of going to canada leaving her because that would be better for her because he was of no use to her and the children so uh, they were talking of going to canada and meanwhile what happened she just went up and took his coat and then the silver box which was there in the coat fell down he tried to stop her but meanwhile she had done that and the silver box uh, fell down so she was all shocked when she saw that silver box there because it was the silver box which had been taken from mr barthick's house and he was inquiring about that so she was quite aghast and shocked that she uh, and inquired about that he said yes i i it uh, i took it but uh, from his house but i was tipsy i was drunk and i didn't steal it and i didn't mean it but it was in the uh, in the effect of liquor i just took it from and i i don't mean to pawn it i just i, I just will throw it into some river so that's what he <clears throat> was trying to just confess and convince her but she said no i'll take this to uh, mr barthick's house and will disclose everything to him i'll tell him everything because he was suspecting me so you have just put my reputation at stake and she was blaming him and meanwhile what happens that mr snow mr snow the detective because mr barthick had reported the case to mr snow and he uh, was now there because he had appointed some constable there to investigate and he was now there to <clears throat> arrest mrs john so he comes and uh, sees that the silver box was there on the ground he takes that silver box and he asks is it her uh, hers she denies is she uh, has she stolen that from mr barthick's house she denies that too and then she he says that okay finally as i have found it here so you must come with me to uh, the police station okay uh, he holds her by the hand and he is taking her to the police station at this mr jones comes in and he says that no you cannot take her to uh, the police station because it was i who took uh, the the silver box not her so you leave her and take me along with him but mr snow actually doesn't uh, pay heed to his words and he just holds her by the hand and takes her along with him so he uh, repeats that leave her leave her but when he doesn't listen to Uh, his comments he gets angry and he thrashes mr snow so at this mr snow gets angry because he had thrashed a policeman on duty and it was an offense it was a punishable offense so another policeman comes in and they to uh, get the better of him they just overpowers him and he was taken to the police station and here mr snow later goes to mr barthick's house and reports the whole matter to mr barthick that he had uh, he asked showing that silver box he asked him that 
was this the silver box uh, they reported for or they were looking for so they of course recognizes the silver box and they said that yes this was the silver box but because it had the symbol that they uh, mentioned and he said that he found it there but it was quite strange that Mr. John said that it was he who stole the silver box and then when they investigated further so the matter came out that it was uh, Mr. Jack Barthwick who actually let him in because he was quite drunk and he uh, <clears throat> was unable to find the keyhole and Mr. Johns actually helped him to find the keyhole and let him get in the house. So as he had no money so he offered him drink and he got the drinks there and then he took that silver box away with him. So Mrs. Barthwick was also quite surprised because so far she was uh, supporting um, her son but when she get to know this she was afraid now what she could do. So Mr. Barthik, John Barthik said don't uh, took the case any further, I, I, we don't want to report the case, we just want to leave him. Uh, uh, so he said but no, it, it must be, uh, he must be tried in the court because he had hit a policeman on duty so the case must be tried and better you engage some solicitor. So finally as it was going to be tried in the court, so he thought of uh, involving a solicitor in that and so Mr. Roper was called in and the whole matter was reported. So now they discuss each and every aspect of the case that how it all happened, how he got the uh, money from the girl and then how he got in and what role was there uh, to play uh, by Mr. Jones. So all that got clear and then Roper said uh, Mrs. Barthwick suggested you say that you don't remember anything. Mr. Roper suggested the same that uh, you simply have to say that you don't remember anything. You were in the effect of uh, liquor and so you uh, don't know the person, you don't know anything. You simply have to stress that. So that's what, what he suggested. Okay, uh, after seven days, eight days, the matter was tried in the court. But before their case, was brought in there was another case in the court and that was of uh, Levin's family actually there were two girls one was Teresa Levin's and the other was Maud Levin's and they were quite homeless uh, wandering in the streets they were crying and then it was their father Mr. Levin's who was being tried in the court so then he said that my wife actually broke with me and the kids uh, left alone I want to um, of course um, uh, take care of these children but I have no job I'm homeless now what I can do for these kids so it was decided that the girls the children should be sent to some shelter home or so uh, and the case uh, was dropped there then it was the turn of of course um, Mr. Jones and uh, the case of the silver box and uh, it was presented before the judge the judge asked all the things and uh, simply as was told to Jack uh, Barthwick he simply said I don't know anything I don't remember anything I don't know this man at this Mr. Jones got angry and he said uh, he, he explained everything that had happened to him Roper in a very wise manner he just uh, managed to get uh, Jake Barthwick out of the case as was told to him Mr. John Barthwick had already told Roper that he his name should not be there in the papers the girl's name should be uh, out of the case the purse and all the things should be out of the case because if the matter came into light came out then his name would be in the papers and it would bring discredit to his name and he didn't want that it would defame him and people would get something to talk about him so he didn't want it so okay uh, first um, he was questioned on Jake Barthwick and he said that 
uh, he don't remember anything and all that then mr jones was asked that what was his economic condition what did he do how did he steal it so he said i didn't steal it i just took it in the effect of liquor i just went there and he was unable to find the keyhole i helped him doing that he offered me the liquor and finally in the effect of liquor i took that silver box so he uh, reported all that in that clear manner uh, but and he also inquired about uh, tried to uh, mention the girl and the purse and all that but roper said it has nothing to do with the case and mr jack barthik was uh, got scot free he was not tried he was not punished and um, jones barthik was punished was given one month hard sentence with uh, hard work there in the prison and also for uh, taking the police officer on duty so he was given one month sentence and he was shouting and crying there that uh, how is it that we we have done the same kind of crime and yet uh, two different um, say uh, judgments for uh, we people if i am guilty he is equally guilty he should also be punished and he should also be put into prison what kind of justice is this he just claims and roars and there he shouts there but he his voice was not heard and finally he was put into prison mrs jones was also freed and um, she was to take care of the children and but mrs jones lost her job at uh, mr barthik's house she was only having uh, uh, working at two houses one it was mr barthik's house so monday wednesday and friday she would work at uh, mr barthik's house and on thursday she would go to stamford house in that way she would get half a crown a day but that was not sufficient to manage the family and now she had lost even the job at mr barthik's house so it was very difficult for her to manage the family and the three children their school and their food so this is what happens to the poor people the rich people with their power and their uh, money they can uh, twist and turn anything uh, against them but the poor it is the poor who suffer and this is the kind of justice the society offers to the poor people so we have different yardsticks for different people the rich class they get scot free and the poor class they have to bear the brunt of the uh, sufferings and the all the hardships and the problems they have to suffer all that so this is what happens to the poor people and uh, this is how john goldsworthy brings to us the condition of the society prevailing in those times that there is no justice for the poor class and he wanted that it should be operative at the same level for all the people whether rich or poor unbiased without any description discrimination that's what he wanted and that's what his humanitarian outlook was so he always worked to bring out equality in the society and such a such a novelist and writer he was so this is all about uh, the silver box and i hope it must be very much clear to you you can um, uh, you can of course write in the comment box and tell me what you expect from me further what kind of things you want me to um, uh, bring for you so i'll definitely be encouraged by that and i would like your um, both positive and critical comments so for more such videos and things just stay tuned keep watching till then thank you very much